Hi, my name is Juan Carlos Saez and I am an associate professor at the Complutense University of Madrid. In this video, I will present our article entitled Enabling Performance Portability of Data Parallel OpenMP Applications on Asymmetric Multicore Processors. All the paper authors are with the Complutense University of Madrid. Our work focuses on official loop scheduling for heterogeneous or asymmetric single ISA multicore processors. AMPs have been proposed as a more power efficient alternative to conventional homogeneous multicores. These processors typically couple high performance big cores with low power small cores. Despite the fact that cores on the platform may exhibit different microarchitectural features, they all expose a common instruction set architecture. This greatly simplifies software development as well as dealing with legacy and modified applications. Asymmetric multicore designs have drawn the attention of major hardware players, giving rise to widely spread processors such as the ARM Big Little. This processor can be found today in mid-range and high-end cell phones and tablets. In addition, a number of development boards are currently available for experimentation with Big Little processors. More recently, Intel has opted for asymmetric multicores for desktop-like environments. For example, this is the case of the hybrid processor found in the Intel Lakefield SoC. The primary goal of this work was to automatically deliver acceptable performance for unmodified loop-based OpenMP applications on AMPs. This type of applications is widely used today in scientific and engineering domains. Moreover, they are commonly used as a tool for performance evaluation on multicore systems. The scalability of data parallel loop-based OpenMP programs greatly depends on aspects such as the existence of phases with limited parallelism or on how effectively the runtime system balances the load when assigning the various loop iterations to different worker threads. Unfortunately, having cores with different performance, which is the case on asymmetric multicore systems, makes it even more difficult to balance the load. To illustrate this issue, let's suppose we run an OpenMP application consisting of a single parallel loop on an asymmetric platform with two big cores and two small ones. Suppose further that this legacy application was designed for a symmetric platform and the static loop scheduling was selected for the loop because their iterations involve roughly the same amount of work. If we ran this unmodified application on the AMP system with four threads, it would poorly utilize big cores as threads running on these faster cores would complete their share of the parallel loop earlier than in small core threads. Hence, big core threads would wait in the implicit barrier for the other threads to complete their work. As a matter of fact, under these circumstances, the performance of the application on a platform featuring exclusively four of those small cores would be very similar. That's exactly what we observe with the EP program from NAS Parallel Benchmarks. In the previous example, balancing the load seems simple. Why can't just systematically assign more iterations to big core threads in proportion to the relative performance that a big core delivers versus a small core? To refer to this relative performance, we use the term speedup factor or SF. In this work, we measure the speed up factor of individual loops for different applications running on two different AMP platforms. We found that not only the speed up factor is platform and application specific, but it may also greatly differ across loops. In particular, on big little platforms, the variation we observe for the SF is huge, even within the same application. This suggests that using a fixed application wide SF to drive loop scheduling would be largely ineffective. To overcome this problem, we propose eight, a new set of loop scheduling methods that unevenly distribute iterations across worker threads. We implemented the various eight methods in LeetComp and make sure they can be applied to a wide range of programs without making changes in the source code. To use eight, however, applications must be recompiled, but the resulting binary may be used on different platforms with the same ISA. Our modified version of the runtime system automatically adapts to the platform, whether symmetric or asymmetric. After this brief introduction, I will move on to describe the design and implementation of AID. And right before concluding, I will proceed to discuss our most relevant experimental results. We created three loop scheduling methods for asymmetric multicore processors. AID static, the first method, is meant as a replacement for the conventional static schedule on AMPs. AID hybrid is a variant of AID static 
that overcomes some of its main limitations, which we will describe later. Finally, a dynamic constitutes an alternative to the conventional dynamic schedule. All methods typically assign a different number of iterations to the worker threads based on the core type they run on, and they do so by catering to the speed up factor of the loop, which is predicted at runtime. Notably, all eight methods are designed assuming that the application runs with a number of threads that does not exceed the number of cores of the platform. Finally, it's also worth mentioning that there's no need to modify applications to use eight methods or to configure their parameters. All that can be done conveniently by using environment variables. The implementation of all eight methods reused part of the implementation of dynamic loop scheduling already found in libgomp. So we begin by describing it. For each loop, the runtime system maintains a shared pool of iterations remaining to be executed. When a worker thread runs out of work, it removes chunks iterations from the pool and then executes them. Libgom manages a shared iteration pool with a log-free implementation, which relies on two shared counters, next and end. The first counter keeps track of the next remaining iteration in the pool, whereas the other one indicates which is the last iteration of the loop. Stealing a fixed number of iterations from the pool comes down to incrementing the next counter atomically. This happened in the gum eater dynamic next function, which was actually the one that we modified to implement our eight methods. Our first proposed method, eight static, was designed for parallel loops where iterations had a very similar amount of work. As we saw earlier, when using the conventional static approach on AMPs, big core threads complete their share of the loop earlier than in small core threads, leading to ineffective utilization of big cores. Our goal with 8static is to make sure that all threads complete their allotted work ideally at the same time. To make this happen, this strategy assigns k iterations to the small core threads and SF time those iterations to big core threads, provided that all available threads obviously complete all loop iterations. Specifically, this is the expression we use for calculating k. The main problem here is that the speed up factor is loop specific, and unless profiling is used, the SF is unknown at the beginning of the loop. 8 static determines the SF at runtime by using the method depicted in this figure. The runtime system tracks the amount of time that each thread takes to run the first chunk iterations of the loop assigned to them, where chunk is a configurable parameter whose default value is 1. The last thread in completing chunk iterations, usually running on a small core, is the one that calculates SF and K. Specifically, the SF is calculated with the ratio of the average completion time registered on big and on small cores. We use the term sampling phase to refer to our method for predicting the speed of factor. It's worth noting that the sampling phase is very efficient and has a log-free implementation. In particular, once a thread has completed the first chunk iterations, it will continue removing and executing additional iterations from the share pool until all threads have actually completed the sampling phase. As a result, useful work is still done during sampling. In our log-free implementation for each static, we use three thread states to control sampling as well as the distribution of iterations. In this state diagram, the bottom part of each state indicates how many iterations each thread removes from the pool when in that state. When a thread reaches the parallel loop, it automatically enters the sampling state. After running chunk iterations, it will enter the sampling waiting state and will remain there until all worker threads have actually completed the sampling phase, namely until the speed up factor has been predicted. Then the thread will transition into the 8th state, where it will be assigned its final share of iteration in this loop, which depend on the core it runs on. Know that in order to guarantee the right distribution of iterations, as explained earlier, we must remove the number of iterations the thread has already completed before entering the 8th state. While 8th static proves effective for many loops, it may also introduce imbalance in some cases. This may happen when the predicted SF value is not representative throughout the loop. For example, we observed this was the case when running the EP application on one of our experimental platforms consisting of four big cores and four small cores. The problem here was that a study assigned too many iterations to big core threads, making small core threads complete their part earlier, reducing scalability as a result. To overcome this problem, we created a hybrid this loop scheduling method, or AMPs, schedules only a fraction of all loop iterations by using 8static, 
the remaining part is scheduled using the conventional dynamic methods of OpenMP. With the aid hybrid method, where the user may specify which fraction to use with its static, the goal is to try to balance the load at the end of the loop. If the predicted SF does not lead to a balanced iteration distribution, we can still assign work to threads that have completed their initial iteration assignment, thus improving the scalability at the expense of a potentially higher runtime overhead. This figure shows the execution of the same application under 8 hybrid, where only the initial 80% of the iterations are scheduled using 8 static. By zooming in on the very last second of the execution, we can see that dynamic loop scheduling ensures a more balanced iteration distribution. For loops where not all iterations involve the same amount of work, the OpenMP standard offers, among others, the dynamic method. One of the main problems of dynamic is the overhead it may potentially introduce, and the fact that its effectiveness may greatly depend on the fixed chunk value selected by the user. Our goal with a dynamic, the third eighth method, was to build a good replacement for dynamic on AMPs. The idea was to let threads running on big cores to remove more iteration each time from the shared pool than threads running on small cores, thus reducing the potential overhead and leveraging the higher performance of big cores. Under a dynamic, the user configures two parameters, referred to as the major and the minor chunk. The major chunk is what the loop scheduling method uses during eight phases, where the loop speed at factor is taken into consideration to let threads running on big cores steal more iterations than small core threads. The minor chunk, by contrast, is used in between two eight phases and at the end of the loop's execution. This pseudocode listing describes how a worker thread behaves under a dynamic. The thread continuously removes iterations from the pool and executes them until the pool is empty. When in the aid mode, which is actually the vast majority of the loop's execution, the thread checks whether the remaining threads have already completed the previous aid phase. If that's the case, the runtime system calculates the R factor, which denotes the progress big core threads are making relative to small core threads. Based on this R factor and on the core type of the thread, the next chunk is selected and the thread will proceed to remove and execute the corresponding iterations. This process continues repeatedly until a shortage of iterations is detected in the pool. When this happens, the dynamic scheduling method is engaged until the end of the loop's execution. The implementation of a dynamic also relies on three thread states, as in eight static. One important difference here is that a thread may enter and exit the eighth state several times in the same loop. In fact, when in this state, a dynamic does not distribute all the remaining iterations across all threads, but instead assigns just a part of these iterations based on the user-defined major chunk. This equation indicates how the relative progress or R factor is defined. At the beginning of the first eight phase, the predicted speed of factor is used. Later, we consider the relative progress observed thus far, as well as a smoothing factor that indicates how well the work in the previous eight phase was balanced across core types. It's worth highlighting that in order to apply aid without making changes in the source code, applications need to be recompiled with our modified version of GCC. The main problem is that for applications with loops with no schedule clause, as in this example, the original GCC compiler systematically applies static scheduling in the generated binary and removes the associated loop-related API calls to the runtime system. With this default behavior, it is just not possible to switch to a different loop scheduling method at runtime. Unfortunately, the vast majority of loops present in the set of OpenMP benchmarks we use were subject to this problem. To address this issue, we modified the GCC compiler so that, in the event that the schedule clause was omitted, the default scheduling selected is runtime instead of static. After recompiling OpenMP application with our modified version of GCC, the compiler now introduces the necessary loop-related API calls in all loops, making it possible to select a different schedule by defining an environment variable. In our experiments, we use two asymmetric multi-core platforms. The first one is the Odroid XU4 board, which features a 32-bit ARMY little processor consisting of four A15 big cores and four Cortex-A7 small cores. The second platform we use is an Intel server system equipped with a Xeon processor with a Broadwell EP microarchitecture. 
We introduce symmetry on this platform by means of a joint reduction of the processor frequency and the duty cycle on four out of the eight cores available, thus simulating cores with different performance. For the evaluation, we use 21 OpenEP programs from the NES Parallel Parsec 3 and Rodinia Benchmark Suites. These programs were compiled on Linux with our modified version of GCC 8.3. In the experiments, we measure the completion time of each best mark and their six different loop scheduling methods applied to all loops in the program. Specifically for the conventional OpenMP methods, we explore two different thread mappings, referred to as SB and BS. Under SB, threads with higher thread IDs run on big cores, whereas under BS, big cores are reserved instead to threads with lower thread IDs. Experimenting with these different mappings enable us to isolate the performance improvement that come in some cases from running serial phases of the master thread or thread zero on big cores, which are sometimes observed on the BS mapping. Note that the implementation of the various eight methods always assume the BS mapping. Note also that in the charts shown later, we omitted for simplicity the results for the guided approach, since it systematically delivers worse performance than any other scheme across the board. We begin by analyzing the results obtained on platform A and using the default chunk and parameter values for all the loop scheduling methods. The results reveal that in some cases, the benefit observed over the baseline, static with SV mapping, comes primarily from running the master thread of the big cores, which allows the acceleration of explicit sequential sections that this thread runs. So the thread mapping mechanism used makes a big difference here. As for benchmark with parallel loops where iterations have a similar amount of work, 8 static and 8 hybrid clearly outperform static and deliver up to 30.7% and 56% performance improvements, respectively over static. In many other cases, scheduling iterations dynamically clearly seems the way to go. In these scenarios, dynamic and adynamic bring the best results, and although they perform in a close 1% range for many programs, we can observe that adynamic is still capable of delivering up to 16.8% performance improvement over dynamic. On platform B, we observe similar trends as on platform A for most applications. However, on this platform, the overhead of the dynamic method causes substantial performance degradation for some programs. This stems from the fact that on this system, the relative benefit of the running threads on a fast core versus low one is substantially smaller, so the overhead simply does not pay off in some cases. A dynamic is able to outperform dynamic here by 22% on average. If we take a look at the average improvements on both platforms, we can conclude that 8-static and 8-hybrid are definitely good replacement for static, with average improvements greater than 15%. As for A-dynamic, the average improvement over dynamic is clearly smaller on the ARM Big Little platform. To look deeper into this scenario, we measure the performance obtained under both dynamic and A-dynamic with a wide range of chunk values. The associated results on platform A illustrate that by looking at the chunk value that delivered the best result for each individual application, A dynamic still improves static by 5.5% on average and obtains nearly a 22% maximum performance improvement. What is more important is that with A dynamic, the performance is clearly less sensitive to the choice of the chunk value. To conclude, we should highlight that our work demonstrated that conventional OpenMP loop scheduling methods are largely inefficient for asymmetric multicores. To address this problem, we propose three new symmetry-aware loop scheduling methods to replace static and dynamic. To use our proposed scheduling techniques without making changes in the applications, programs need to be recompiled with our modified version of the GCC compiler. By extensive experiments on real AMP hardware, we demonstrated that 8-static and 8-hybrid constitute very effective replacements for static, bringing substantial performance improvement to unmodified applications. We also showed that 8-dynamic outperforms the conventional dynamic scheduling method. As for future work, we plan to assess the potential of using the various 8 methods in different loops of the same application. We will also try to devise interaction mechanism between the runtime system and the OS to exploit aid strategies in multi-application scenarios. 
Lastly, we will explore the design of variants of aid to target other types of applications and heterogeneous platforms. Thanks for watching.